In this tutorial, we will examine the motion of a particle in a fluid. And for this, uh, a term called terminal velocity is something that we will develop a uh, mathematical expression for, and also a Stokes expression that will help us in that uh, derivation. Uh, so if we have a particle that is uh, falling from rest, it will accelerate uh, due to gravity and then it will reach a constant velocity and that constant velocity will be called terminal velocity. Uh, so to develop a, uh, a mathematical relationship for this, uh, we will conduct a force balance. So here we have a sphere uh, for our particle. For this uh, spherical particle, we will draw a uh, free body diagram. In other words, we will try to examine various forces that are interacting uh, on this particle. So the first force is uh, particle weight, uh, and we express that with the mass of the particle, mp, times the acceleration due to gravity, uh, g. The uh, second force is due to the fluid that is displaced, and that upthrust, that force is uh, mass of that fluid that is displaced times g, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Another force here is the drag force that acts against the particle weight, and we use the symbol F. The fourth force is the force due to acceleration. If the particle is accelerating, then we will have the mass of the particle times the acceleration A uh, to represent that force. Now, all these uh, forces must uh, balance in this uh, free body diagram, and uh, we can write an equation then, uh, considering all the forces that are acting downward and the others that are acting uh, in the opposite upward direction. So we have mp times g for the particle weight, plus mp times a for the force due to acceleration, and that equals the force due to the upthrust, the mass of fluid times acceleration due to gravity, plus the drag force. Now, we can rewrite this equation by replacing the acceleration A with the change in velocity with time, du over dt. Now, for a spherical particle, Stoke determined that that force, that drag force, equals 3 times pi times d times mu times u, where d is the diameter of the sphere, mu is the viscosity of the fluid, and u is the velocity. So let's look at the next screen uh, where we have the uh, uh, force balance equation and the expression developed by Stoke for the drag force. Now u is the relative velocity between the particle and the fluid through which the particle is moving. So when the particle reaches the terminal velocity, then by definition, it does not accelerate. Therefore, the acceleration term, A, that we had used in our force balance, uh, which we represented as du over dt, will be equal to zero. So that uh, second term in the uh, equation on the top of the screen will drop out so for a sphere, we also know that its volume is uh, pi over 6 times the diameter raised to power 3. Now assume that the density of the fluid is rho f, the density of the particle is rho p, and if we substitute these in our force balance equation, we have pi over 6 d cube rho p times g, and that equals pi over 6 d cube rho f times g plus 3 pi d mu times ut. So we are using, instead of u, the velocity, we are using the terminal velocity, and we call it ut. Uh, again, rearranging some of the terms, uh, we can write pi over 6 times d cube 
G and in the parenthesis we have rho P minus rho F. We obtain this by moving the uh, first term on the right hand side uh, to the left hand side and that equals 3 pi d mu times ut. Now pi will cancel out and again rearranging the terms and writing this expression in terms of the terminal velocity we have ut equals d square g in parentheses rho p minus rho f divided by 18 times mu. So this is the equation for terminal velocity. Let's uh, briefly look at the assumptions that we used in deriving this equation. First, this equation was obtained for a single smooth surface sphere of diameter d. And the sphere is falling in a homogeneous liquid and there is no effect of other particles that are present in the fluid on the motion of this uh, spherical particle that we are looking at. And also that this particle size is much larger than the molecules in the fluid, uh, which is a pretty reasonable uh, assumption. And then we also note that uh, this equation is valid for a Reynolds number uh, larger than 10 raised to power minus 4 and less than 0 0.2, where Reynolds number of course is the density of the fluid times terminal velocity ut times d divided by mu. So this uh, expression that we obtained for terminal velocity is limited to small size particles and uh, we will examine the use of this equation for uh, certain examples in uh, some of the following tutorials.